think those intro photos really say it all. The plate chiller is a wonderful tool to have, but you really have to make sure it's clean. So let's get into the video and take a look to see how I do it. I finished my brew day and I've done my initial cleanup. What I want to focus on is the plate chiller in this particular case. Now, the plate chiller is great for your brewing process, but this video is going to really show and emphasize why you need to be really attentive to your cleaning of it. What I did is basically just drained out what was left in the chiller once the transfer was done. You can see that pint glass on top shows what came out of it. Plenty of wort, which by the way is crystal clear, isn't it? As well as some trube and hot material. This is the stuff you really need to get out because if you don't, it's going to sit in there and uh, be a potential and likely problem for contamination of your future batches. So what I'm going to do is essentially flip that plate chiller upside down, hook it up like I normally do in my brewing process, and run hot PBW through it in the opposite direction of my standard uh, flow while I'm actually doing the brewing. I'll get that set up and show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're all set now to do the back flush. Now keep in mind that on the brew day, I actually ran cold water through the system. The pump was still connected. The, the plate chiller, all the hoses, just as is. And once I finished the transfer, I connected cold water and just basically back flushed out. So now that's the easy stuff. What we want to get out now is any of the uh, debris that's stuck in there. As you notice, I flipped the plate chiller upside down. So the valve used to be on the top here. Just rotated them over so I can circulate through in the opposite direction. And what that will do is any material that's lodged in, the back flush will push it right back out. So we're going to turn it on, let it run for a few minutes. I'll uh, kind of take some extra shots, show you what we have going on. But this is really all there is to it. Let's get it going. Pump. Chiller. Just circulating it into the uh, kettle there. Warm PBW. I'll let this run for 20 minutes or so. Turn the pump off, let it stand for a bit. Run it a bit more, and then do the hot water rinse. And again, the whole goal was to make sure that plate chiller is absolutely perfectly clean. Be back in a minute. Okay, so I ran the cleaning fluid for 20 minutes. Then turn the pump off, let it stand for another 20. Turn it back on for about another 20. So it ran for maybe the better part of an hour. So that's all done. I'm going to turn on the hot water rinse now. And I'll pull the camera off and show you what came out of the uh, plate chiller. And I'll notice it's a little discolored, but there's no, no chunks or real offensive things, which, which is good. And the reason for that is I do this process every single time. I'll admit that at first I didn't do this. And the first time I did a deep cleaning on that plate chiller, I could not believe the amount of junk that came out. Slimy debris, oh my gosh. To think I was running my new beer through that, it was eye-opening. So if you do this each time, it's really simple. You'll have no problems whatsoever. And the plate chiller is a great tool to have. So let me get the uh, hot water going and I'll let you take a look at the bucket and see what came out of the chiller. So that's what we have. That's the output from the PDW in the chiller. I drained the entire thing and that's what we wound up with. And then just for the sake of completeness, there's the hot water rinse going on right now. So I'll turn this off and show one final step I do, and that of course is sanitizing it now, and then I repeat this on the brew day. So let me shut this down. Okay, so we're all done. We're uh, nice and clean. I feel that everything that needed to be washed out of here has been. So the final step is going to be to sanitize it. What I do for my sanitizer is I keep it off the stand. I go ahead and put a funnel in and fill it up with star sand. 
Now the interesting thing about these plate chillers are, while it seems like it might be full, it's really not. Um, the uh, output might be, you know, coming out here, but if you remove the funnel, give it a shake back and forth a bit, that liquid level will actually go down a plate or two, go ahead and top it off, and then you know that the, the whole chiller is completely full. You really need to do that because you don't want any little crevices where there's either debris left behind or an area that's not being sanitized properly. So again, I go through this step each and every time after I brew, back flush immediately with the cold water, flip over the chiller, run my PBW through it backwards to really remove and, and flush out anything that might be in there, uh, a clean hot water rinse, and then the sanitization steps, both right now and then actually right before I brew too, just to make sure and everything's gonna be fine. As long as you do these steps, you can't go wrong with the plate chiller. It's a great thing to have. It speeds up your brewing day by quite a bit and it really is not anything to be concerned about. So hopefully this helped. Feel free to comment and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks so much.